Top Microsoft Planner Tips and Tricks Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I will be showing you guys how you can get started with your Microsoft Planner. So let's get into it. Now I have a Microsoft account and oftentimes we underestimate the potential that we have with Microsoft because it can really help you integrating different aspects of your studies, of your work, or of other things that you usually do with Microsoft and you don't even realize. So to get started, simply head on over to Microsoft Planner, click on create a plan, and then this will give you a bunch of different templates or a blank slate that you can get started with. So depending on what kind of thing you want to do, we can get started with any kind of template, project management, simple planning, software development, employee onboarding, or business plan. So I'm going to go with project management. It's a simple way to get started and you can enter your plan title. So let's say this is actually a marketing plan. Then you can also invite your group. So you can see I'm a part of multiple different groups and I can actually create a group beforehand on Microsoft and then enter all those people over here. Then if I ever want to hold a video conference using MS Teams, I can hold that. I can do document sharing. I can share PowerPoint presentations and files all directly from my project manager as well. Then you also have sensitivity and security. So if this is going to be a public plan or private, I'm going to make this private and click on create. Now, I would really compare this to using like a separate tool like ClickUp or Trello or Asana. All of those are super powerful tools, but if you need a basic system to set up your basic, you know, project management or business management, then doing it directly on Microsoft is so simple, especially with the fact that 90% of the time you're going to be only using the basic features anyways of ClickUp or Trello or Asana or whatever it might be. So using Microsoft can really help you in setting up and, you know, simplifying this stuff. So now you can see this is the project management template. So they have buckets, which are basically the statuses, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling. Then we have closing. And you can click on add new bucket and they make bucket. So, so I can add a new bucket called successfully closed. Then I can click on add task. Or what I'm actually going to do is that if I go into the first bucket, and I have to uh, identify the goals. Let's say I completed that. So this is going to move into the, uh, you know, completed section. Then let's say I did all of that. So I've done all that. Now I can actually move this into the planning section if it is something that needs to be planned. If it's something that has just been completed, you can just complete it and you can move down. And you can also add your attachments. You can click on see more. And then once everything has been completed, so let's say all of it has been completed, and I can just leave it as it is. It's going to move to the bottom. And I'm just going to refresh this over here. But you can see it's just going to move to the bottom. And that is it. So once everything has been done, I can just click on over here. And that is it. Now, after that, I also have multiple different labels I can create to better categorize items as well. I like to uh, use labels to uh, define the urgency of a document or of a task. So uh, if I click on add task, we're going to get started from scratch. So let's say I, in my marketing, I have to create, so ideas for perfume, I have to create that. So I'm going to open up this task. Now, after that, you can assign this to a specific person within your Microsoft Planner. You can add other people or your team, and then you can assign this to a certain person. Then you have your bucket. So let's say this is in the initiating bucket. Then you have your progress. So it can be not started, in progress, or completed. So let's say this is in progress. Then you can set your priority. So it can, it can be urgent, important, or medium, or low. So let's say this is medium. Then you can have a start date and a due date. So let's say I need to have an idea by the 18th. Then you can set up recurring tasks. Now, recurring tasks are super helpful if you want to schedule your own personal day. I have uh, really loved using the Microsoft Planner to set my own study timing. So to manage your own day, or if you are a teacher, or if you're just someone that's like a manager, then you can set up your clients or yourself or your students in a specific day-to-day -day plan. You can create their daily plan. You can add their repetitive tasks that they have to do. If you're a parent, you can add the repetitive chores and have a repeated daily schedule, weekdays, weekly, monthly, or yearly schedule, or 
for this i'm not going to repeat it then you can add any kind of notes and descriptions and then you can add a checklist as well so it could be idea board idea sample so whatever is the checklist whatever is the major task at hand if it can be broken down into smaller steps you're going to add those smaller steps into the checklist this helps you in organizing your tasks and then after that you have attachment so any relative files that you have you can select from your team's files so your microsoft teams if you have added any files there you can link them you can link to a url as well or you can add them from your computer and add comments as well. Then you can choose if you want to show these on the card, the checklist items. Let's say I want to show them. And now once I've done that, I'm just going to close this. And now you can see our new card has been created. Now, once the card has been completed, I can click on completed. And the card is going to move into the completed uh, section at the bottom. And it is present at the bottom of the bucket. Now, there are two ways you can do this. You can move tasks to the end section and create your own bucket that is called closed or completed items but this will appear as a open section so what i actually like to do is i like to actually keep it as the microsoft system is so uh, i'm gonna go back and i like to keep all the closed things at the bottom like this and then i'm going to mark this as completed so it's just going to move to the bottom and what I actually like to create the buckets for is different sections or categorizations of the business or of the project. So let's say first is idea generation. Let's say I'm working in marketing. This is for my marketing business and I want to create a simple planner. So first is idea generation. These are the ideas. Then people can move the completed ideas to the bottom. Then let's say uh, I have the next section, which is so templates and samples where people can uh, add the potential templates that are being created and then move them to completed once the template or sample has been completed. Then I could have approved ideas where people can add the tasks for approved ideas and then mark them as completed. So this serves as a more functional way to mark everything and make sure everything is on board. Now, after that, you also have a different views. So you can click on grid over here. Every task in the form of a grid, then you have charts as well. So you can see the statuses of multiple different charts. If anything is late, in progress, not started, completed, then you can browse the bucket, which bucket has the most tasks that need to be completed. And then you have priority and members as well. So uh, who is completing how many tasks, how much is each individual member of your specific plan working. Then you also have your schedule. So this shows you a calendar view, and this is good for people that are working on deadlines if your work is related to that then you also have conversations members files notebook so the notebook section is where you can jot down some notes about your specific planner a meeting or you know business meeting whatever using your planner for you can write down any kind of note over here then after that you have your personal account then you have your members and you also have your personal account settings on the top right over here where you can uh, sign out or go into a different account. And then you have your board. So in your marketing board, if you click on the title, you can change the notification settings and your basic background settings as well. So whatever you want to set as your background, you can set it as well. Now, this is just one specific section. If I click on new plan, I can create a new plan for a different uh, set of a task or a different project or a different organization as well. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and I will catch you guys in the next video.